my last sermon uh, that I just uh, felt I should share with you uh, more concerning uh, some history and some things our general overseers have, uh, have said uh, concerning uh, interpretation of tongues. So if you'd open your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 14. Verses 39 and 40. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. Uh, I trust that nothing that we have said concerning uh, the order and the operation of the spiritual gifts uh, would put a damper on the true operation of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome the heavenly dove uh, in our midst. And we do not forbid to speak with tongues. Uh, we should desire to speak with tongues, even in public worship. Uh, but we should also uh, have a desire that not only as individuals that we be edified, but that the whole church be edified, yes, uh, not only with uh, tongues, but also with the interpretation uh, of tongues. Going back to uh, verse 6, Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by uh, doctrine. Uh, so uh, uh, we see that there is a, a, an operation that is not in order uh, that does not profit. The question, what shall I profit you? But I believe the implication is there that if things are done decently and in order, that we will profit uh, thereby. Amen? Amen? And even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the, in the sounds, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself uh, for battle? So likewise ye accept ye utter uh, by the tongue words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. So uh, is our main text, the first two verses that we read, said let all things be done decently and in order. Uh, otherwise, we will not a prophet. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will just speak into the air to no profit. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without a signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of uh, the voice, if things are not done decently and in order, uh, the meaning of what is happening will not be understood. I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto uh, me. But notice the next verse. It is not saying that we should not be zealous of spiritual gifts, uh, but rather just, just the opposite. Uh, the fact that we, uh, if it's not decent in an order, that it can be of no profit, that it can just be speaking into the air, that it can mean that we don't uh, know the meaning of what's happening, uh, that, that uh, it can mean that we seem like a barbarian to some. What it, it does not mean that we should not be zealous of spiritual gifts. For the next verse said, Even so ye, 
For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Amen. So we are uh, to seek to get close enough to God that the Holy Ghost can work whatever gift He wills through us, but to do it in such a way, in decency and in order, uh, to where uh, it is not just all self-edification, but it will be for the edification or the building up of uh, the whole church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Skipping down to verse uh, 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you half a psalm, half a doctrine, half a tongue, half a revelation, half an interpretation, let all things be done unto uh, edifying. Uh, the, the enemy will actually tempt some to exalt themselves, amen, and be the center of attention by uh, working uh, uh, toward, uh, to where a supposed operation of the gifts uh, is really uh, just, just an ego trip. He will tempt people uh, to do that. Uh, but that is not uh, the way uh, uh, it, it should be. Uh, uh, you know, uh, look at me. Uh, I have a psalm. I have a doctrine. I have a tongue. I have a revelation. I have uh, 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 an interpretation. Uh, no, but let all things be done unto edifying. Amen. I believe the purpose of each of the nine gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 is to build up and help one another. Uh, if you look over that list of the nine gifts, every one of them, and this is brought out in the last half of the chapter of how we are to have the same care one for another. If any man speak in an unknown, unknown tongue, and it mentions uh, order here, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one uh, interpret. And uh, previously we've gone into further explanation of that. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and uh, to a uh, God. Our God is a God of order. Amen. Just think about uh, God as creator. When he created the heavens and uh, the earth and the order that's there, uh, put the planets in their place. The, the sun rises every day. You have the moon at, at night. You have the earth on its orbit. Uh, not It was out of chaos uh, that God uh, brought uh, order. And uh, God believes uh, in order. Uh, uh, there, uh, we want the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, uh, but things must be done uh, in order. If it is truly of God, it will be in order. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Reading again, verses... Well, verse 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all uh, churches of the saints. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, if it's not a church of saints, of people that are saved and sanctified, well then... Uh, uh, there, there may be a lot of confusion instead of peace. But if you're talking about uh, churches of the saints, of the saints, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. 
You see, sometimes the confusion comes in of which God is not the author uh, because uh, people are uh, supposedly uh, manifesting the gifts of the Spirit when they're not even sanctified. Amen? Amen. Amen. But in the churches of the saints, hallelujah, hallelujah. instead of confusion, uh, there is peace. Verses 39 and 40. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. I want to throw in a, a little side note here before I go further. Uh, and that is, uh, in English, uh, we have uh, the word uh, hermeneutics. Hermeneutics. And uh, this has to do uh, with the interpretation uh, of Scripture. Uh, there's a Greek word that that comes from. But the word in 1 Corinthians 14 and, and in chapter 12 that has to do with the interpretation of tongues, it's not the, the, the Greek word uh, armenuo from which we get harmon, hermeneutics. But it's armenuo preceded by the prefix dia, which means all around and all about. So uh, it would seem that when you're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, since the Holy Ghost inspired the writers to use the word with this prefix of dia about, and all around, it's not necessarily a word-for-word -word translation. The interpretation of tongues. And I believe I can show that as this same word is used in Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And this is where the two men on the Emmaus Road after Jesus had been resurrected and Jesus starts walking along beside them. And it said, In beginning at Moses and all the prophets, He expounded unto them in all the Scripture the things concerning Himself. That word expounded is translated from the same Greek word uh, well, it's in verb form, that the noun form is found in uh, uh, noun and verb in 1 Corinthians 12 in 1 Corinthians 14. So when one speaks in tongues and another is interpreting, it may actually uh, be interpreting in the sense of expounding. Can you say amen, Sister Shannon? Uh, I'm referring to her uh, because of being fluent uh, in English and Spanish, and I believe others will tell you uh, that sometimes uh, just uh, it takes more than just uh, uh, the same number of words. It may take a phrase to explain a word. So don't necessarily rule it out if somebody just speaks a few short words in an unknown tongue and the interpretation uh, sounds longer. Okay, now that doesn't cost uh, uh, any, anything uh, extra. Let's move on here. I wanted to share with you some things that our general overseers uh, have said or, or done, uh, some of it history, uh, some of it quotes. A great revival took place in uh, this uh, town, and not only Cleveland, but in Chattanooga uh, in 1909. And uh, you can read in A.J. Thomason's uh, diary, uh, oh my, such great and glorious things, such as on March the 21st. He said, I came home from Chattanooga yesterday where I preached three sermons in one meeting. I suppose I gave 10 uh, to 15 interpretations. May the 27th. Yesterday was a wonderful day in camp. In the beginning of the service, in the morning, one or two messages were given in tongues. 
And I gave the interpretation. Afterward, I was seized with two or three uh, uh, paroxysms. I didn't look up the pronunciation of that. Uh, but of weeping, when finally I fell on my back under the power, and after screaming for a while, as though my heart would break, I became more quiet. Then a brother spoke a few words in tongues, and they said I gave the interpretation, which was, uh, get quiet and hear me speak. My, what, a, what an interpretation, get quiet and hear me speak. Immediately following this, a sister began to speak in tongues. The interpretations followed the tongues after uh, each few words, uh, alternately until the sentence was finished. This lasted, I was told, for half an hour. When she ceased, someone else spoke a few minutes, and the interpretation followed. Then another and another and another. Amen. I say, oh God, do it again. How we need the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit in our midst. Uh, uh, we don't need wildfire. We don't need counterfeit. Uh, we don't need the fake. But oh my God, how we do need the real thing. Hallelujah. Uh, more and more. And another and another and another. Uh, you know, A.J. Tomlinson, uh, had just received the Holy Ghost uh, uh, either in 1907 or, or 1908. Uh, he was general overseer before he received uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, but uh, uh, Brother uh, Caswell, uh, who had been to the Azusa Street Revival and was preaching uh, to various denominations, uh, he was asked to come and preach in our assembly. And A.J. Thomason received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And oh, after he received it, you see how powerful that the gifts of the Spirit were operating. Yes, we need discernment. A question was asked in the 8th assembly, 1913. How may we discern interpretations? And the answer was given by being in close touch with the Lord yourself and being assured that the interpreter is clean and pure in every sense. That goes right along with the scripture uh, that uh, spoke of the church of the saints. Amen. In the 18th assembly, or pardon me, the 13th assembly. Uh, in 1918, the general overseer's address, he said, our people should be encouraged to yield to the Spirit and even to stir up the gift that is in them. Preaching is necessary, but if all of our services were given to preaching only, the spiritual fire would go out. Amen. There must be testimonies, talking in tongues, interpretations, signs, wonders, dancing, and whatever else the blessed Spirit of God dictates. Our people must be free in the Holy Ghost. This freedom must not be taken away from them. A part of almost every service should be given to these free exercises in the Spirit then the preaching will be enjoyed better. It will do more good. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. M.A. Thomason in 1978 said, In our zeal for the church, we have at times given the impression that the gifts of the Spirit uh, could uh, operate only within the church. If this were true, then it would not be possible for someone outside the church to give out a message in tongues or to interpret a message which had been given in tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues, an interpretation of tongues, or gifts of the Spirit. I feel it is good to emphasize the positive aspect of the Holy Ghost's ministry within the church. 
We want to stay yielded to the Holy Ghost, living close to God, so that He may use any one of us at any time for the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit as He sees the need. Oh, hallelujah. Sounds good to me. How about you? At the same time, we would not attempt to limit Him in the work He might see fit uh, to do among other uh, spirit-filled uh, people. In 1981, M.A. Thompson, well, after his annual address had finished, right at the end of it, the general overseer uh, encouraged all uh, to be pace-setters. He had all to stand and hold hands all the way around the tabernacle, and there was great rejoicing and praising God as the Holy Ghost was trying to witness. Brother Thomason asked us to be quiet and let the Holy Ghost speak to us. Interpretation was given, but only this could be heard. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. I remember those times on Keith Street, that 10,000-seat auditorium being packed to capacity, people rejoicing, praising God, and all at once uh, there would be a holy hush. Uh, you would and even hear a baby crying uh, to where any and everyone in that auditorium unless uh, uh, they was uh, they were uh, more deaf than, than I am <laughs> could hear every word uh, from one uh, part of it all the way to, to the other uh, in that 10,000 seat auditorium. Hallelujah. Oh God, uh, may we not be so afraid of wildfire until we have no fire at all. Uh, we need the fire of the Holy Ghost working in our services and the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. Let me tell you that Jesus, when he said, I'm going away, he said, I'll send the Holy Ghost. He knew that the church could not do her work and accomplish her commission except as the Holy Ghost had liberty among us to operate as he will. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In 1994, the 89th assembly. You'll find you can find this on pages 14 through 16 in item three of the Question and Subjects Committee. Assembly business and the spirit of discernment. Considerations in the 20th annual assembly. I'm, I'm reading from this QS report. <clears throat> they quote. A.J. Thomason. They said in the 20th Annual Assembly, the General Overseer addressed this subject with these words. We do not want to get in such a routine of form that the Holy Ghost will be ruled out. But there is certain business to attend to and knowledge uh, we need that will require the guidance of the Holy Ghost to obtain and that makes us feel our dependence upon Him in every session. We only want to do business that the Spirit will approve and also want the speakers anointed by the Holy Ghost for their ministry so that when all is over, we can say as of old, it seemeth good to the Holy Ghost uh, and to us. There are two extremes to be avoided, either one of which, if followed exclusively, will lead to dissatisfaction and failure. One of these dangers is to undertake to do all of our business in a dry, formal, legal way, exclusive for prayer and the operation of the Spirit, like is done under legal forms by businessmen of the world. The other is to undertake to trust in tongues 
and interpretations or special revelations from God for all of our decisions. To my mind, one is about as dangerous as the other. But there is a glorious middle ground for us to travel that always brings joy and satisfaction uh, and success. We have no record of the early church doing business by tongues and interpretations. However, there are provisions made for the Holy Spirit to speak and interpretations uh, to be given. Uh, let, let me interject this. In Acts 15, the Scripture said, It seemeth good to the Holy Ghost and us. Now, we do not have, I'm sure, recorded every word that was spoken uh, in that assembly or everything uh, that, that was done. And I don't know as to how many or perhaps all of the gifts may, may have operated. But if there was a message in interpretation, we know the Holy Ghost did move. Said it seemeth good to the Holy Ghost and us. Uh, if there was a message in interpretation, it was not uh, so uh, significant in this business session uh, for uh, it even to be uh, recorded uh, in, uh, uh, in Scripture. And uh, so we can't do all of our business by tongues and interpretation. But there is provision made for the Holy Ghost to work, and He may work that way. Uh, but A.J. Thomason said, But let us be doubly sure it is the Spirit of God before we yield to what might seem to be uh, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit may want to express His approval or disapproval. And if so, it is not in us to quench or reject Him. But we only want to know uh, it is the Holy Spirit and not another Spirit. And John instructs us to try the spirits to see whether they are of God or not. All will readily see that I am not undertaking uh, uh, to refuse the Spirit of God, His perfect freedom in the assembly, but I am only advising carefulness that we may honor Him the more. I feel sure that God will be with us in all of our deliberations, and He knows that we are dependent upon Him for wisdom and guidance because we are asking Him. After this quote, the report goes on to say, The church of God earnestly desires the Holy Ghost, the heavenly dove, our teacher and guide, to manifest His presence among us to our edification. However, there is one, Satan, who is interested in hindering, confusing any manifestation of the Holy Ghost in the church. But we know in these last days, God has restored uh, to the church the gift of discernment that the church may know that it has truly been visited by the blessed Holy Ghost. To that end, the following is presented for your consideration. Recommendation. The assembly must be given the opportunity to exercise the gift of discernment of spirits in regards to the gift of interpretation of tongues. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. The same Spirit operates each of these gifts through the Holy Ghost, fill members of the body as He wills. Therefore, the Bi Bible does not limit the manifestation of the gift of interpretation of tongues or the gift of discernment of spirits to a certain person, office, or committee. Although the assembly must never quench the Spirit, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 19 through 21, yet it must always try the spirits whether they are of God. Should an interpretation of tongues be in conflict with the Bible, it is obviously not of God. 1 John 5, uh, verses 6 through 8. 
both the content of the interpretation and the method of interpretation must be in agreement with the Scripture. 1 Corinthians 14 offers guidelines for the manifestation of the gifts of prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Verses 29 and 30 teach that those who sit by are to judge or discern uh, the supposed manifestation of the Spirit. In the General Assembly, the opportunity for such discernment is provided by the theocratic principle of unanimous agreement oh, whereby it may be said for it seemeth good to the Holy Ghost and us. Now those words theocratic principle of unanimous agreement are a quote from a previous ruling in that same report outlining things like motions and seconds. And I was on the committee when this was written and I know the intent uh, uh, of these uh, words uh, uh, were that the I, outline that the Holy Ghost has given us for the motions and seconds and, and so on and the discussion uh, makes provision for discernment to be expressed. Amen. Hallelujah. 1995 the 90th Assembly Robert Pruitt said now let us consider another aspect of our relationship with God as His agents on earth. And that is listening to what the Holy Ghost has to say. I first must acknowledge that every utterance that comes forth as an interpretation of a message in tongues is not necessarily from the Holy Ghost. I believe all of us recognize that. Sometimes people use this means of communication to attempt to put across some word or idea of their own which, of which the Holy Ghost had no part in. But that does not alter the fact that the real Holy Ghost is speaking more and more to the last day's church of God to give inspiration, guidance, and instruction in the unfamiliar waters we are in. Many of us here today vividly remember the heartbreak and anguish of soul we felt in the assemblies just a few years ago, uh, or a few years past, I'm sure referring back to the 80s, when the Holy Ghost spoke with intensity and great appeal to the church to straighten up and mend its ways, only to see Him ignored and pushed aside. Time and time again, He tried to break through that hard crust of disregard and unbelief to tell us of what He was going to do if the church did not heed His message. It was obvious that he was grieved to the depth of his being because he knew of what the result of this would be to the church. My brothers and sisters, we must not let this happen again. We have gone through the process of reorganization because some of the leaders of the former organization chose to ignore the Holy Ghost and go about their own program uh, and we have seen the tragedy of their mistake. What the Holy Ghost is saying to us today through the interpretations or any way He would choose is as important to us is the words he inspired holy men of God to write in ages past. He will not be ignored. We must heed and take seriously what he is saying to us. He will not long tolerate those who take him lightly. Very strange. In studying and preparing this message, <laughs> that... Somehow it did not cross my mind this is the same week of the General Assembly. <laughs> uh, you know, 
I don't know, God may use this on, uh, on YouTube if it's, if it's working. <laughs> what the Holy Ghost... Okay, he will not tolerate those who take him lightly. There have been many such messages from the Holy Ghost which were given in the recent past and are available in our assembly minutes, including those given in the solemn assembly minutes and others which have been recorded on tape at various meetings. It would be good for us to review these sometimes prophetic and sometimes informative and sometimes advisory messages which have been given to us for some specific reason which we should take seriously and do what the Holy Ghost is telling us to do. Since the Holy Ghost is here to guide us in the all truth, it is important that we follow our guide. And a note of warning is in order here. The Holy Ghost will never contradict God's Word. We are responsible to know the Word and be sensitive to the Spirit's guidance. John later tells us to try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 1 John 4 and 1, we try them by the truth. Putting it bluntly for clear understanding. False prophets may speak in tongues and interpret the tongues, at least apparently. Therefore, every message and interpretation we hear may not be of God. It is expedient that we discern the spirits, lest we believe a lie or reject the truth. It must be emphasized, however, that the manifestation of the Spirit are not to be limited to speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and quickening bodily exercises. These evidences may be more visible, but it is worthy of note that Jesus did not mention any of these things specifically in John chapters 14, 15, in 16, I preached the message on theocracy at the assembly in 2007. I guess it's all right to quote myself. <laughs> it says, in the business of the church of God, we should not be, we, we should be, in the business of the church of God, we should be not slowful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, Romans 12 and 11. There may be times when tongues and interpretation of tongues can help us to know what seems good to the Holy Ghost, Acts 15, 28. However, the other gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 can also help us to know what seems good to the Holy Ghost. Sometimes in our business, for instance, we may even need the gift of healings to operate. Not just physical healings, but maybe there's strife, there, there's, there's the vision. So all the gifts of the Spirit are, are uh, important. Hallelujah. Oh God, may it be said of this upcoming assembly. It seemeth good to the Holy Ghost and us. Amen. God bless you all.